everybody, welcome to D Town, the free show for digital SLR shooters. I'm Larry Becker, and he is RC. Hey, what's going on, everybody? How you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. I'm I was out last week, but Matt did an okay job. I Apple yeah. came in and filled in. So <laughs> but I wanted to make sure you didn't miss me this week, so I wore school bus yellow. <laughs> I know, it's good. <laughs> you can make, make a statement with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to start off with a tip today about diopter adjustments. Now, this is a focus adjustment that has nothing to do with your image. And you know, all this stuff kind of came to, to my attention, really, because I'm over 40 years old. And when you get over 40, you end up having to use readers. And I see photographers all the time going back and forth between their glasses and flipping them up and looking through the lens or looking through their viewfinder and what have you. So I wanted to talk to you about two things today. First one is I wrote an article some time ago about a breakthrough that I had about some new contact lenses because um, I hated using the readers. I hated using some glasses sometimes, and I have old eyes, but I got some great lenses, but I don't want to go into a lot of detail about that. Just check out the blog post. Go to lbecker.com slash blog, and then do a quick search for contact lenses, and you'll find the article that I wrote there. And uh, send me an email if you have questions about it, because it's, it's an interesting topic, important topic to me. But as far as the diopter goes, what the, what the deal is, is as you're looking through your image finder and uh, working with an image and you put your face up there, whether you wear glasses or don't, what matters is, is the image in focus to your eye, not to the camera itself, obviously that matters too, but what you want to do is make sure that you set up on a tripod, and this is this three-step process, set up on a tripod, focus on something using autofocus, Focus on something that's somewhat close by. So just push the button halfway down, get your focus. Now go in and look at the image and make sure that it helps a lot of times if you have just like a plain textured wall or something like that. And as you're looking at the image, just move the little diopter. It's a little dial here on the back, on the, on the Nikon, it's right here. Just a little dial. And just move this little dial until it's perfect focus to you. And so that's all you have to do, really. You're just setting the camera to focus, the focus to agree with your eyeball next to the viewfinder. Again, it doesn't affect your finished image. The camera's gonna capture the right finished image, assuming your autofocus lens is working right. But set up on a tripod, do the focus, do it to a textured wall or something like that, then set your diopter. One last thing, I use this thing all the time too. This is a Hoodman loop, and you put that on the back. It has a built-in diopter adjustment too. So you'll want to set up on the back of your camera and then just twist this until you get the sharpest possible image. That's your diopter adjustment. And if you loan somebody your camera, you might find that their eye is a little bit different than yours, or maybe they wear reading glasses and you don't, what have you. Uh, they're gonna have different diopter adjustments than you will. But a lot of people, I set it up one time and then I forget about it, but a lot of people don't even know about it, and they're always wondering why when they look through, it's, it's a little bit off or not quite as sharp as it could be, and that's the answer. We have gotten a lot of questions. Like, I'm, I'm, coming th I'm combing through questions on that stuff, Yeah. and there's a lot of questions that come in about that. My lens won't focus, my lens won't focus, right. and I'm like, it's not the lens. Right, because if you look at the finished images on your computer and things, uh. they're sharp, but you're always wondering, why is it off just a little bit? And then people squint, it gives them headaches. They're not, yeah. It's the eye. I see that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to. Sorry. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we've got a lot more stuff. I'm going to talk to you guys about portraits and plates. Stick around. We'll be right back. Hey guys, Tom Bo here. We're at Copper Mountain in Colorado. We're working on a new class on adventure sports. Um, we're going to look at a lot of different things in this class. Everything from high speed sync fill flash to working in portraits in a ski area environment. We'll look at gear concerns, what kind of pack to carry, how do you work on and off a lift. There's a lot of logistics that go into shooting skiing. We'll talk about getting that classic powder shot. We're also going to do one of the most classic things for ski photography, and that's seaming together a whole sequence of moves is absolutely fantastic. It's gonna be wild, should be a great class.
Hey everybody, welcome back. Now, RC, you've got a tip on portraits, and some of our viewers actually take portraits. So yeah, and it's, what have you got? it's actually one of those like kind of, oh, that's why you do it. A lot of the times when people do portrait photography, they spend a lot of time carrying their camera and they carry the camera on their hands because sure. they think that portraits is gonna be, it's, it's basically a shoot over here, shoot over here, shoot up, shoot down. Right. If I'm trying to do an environmental portrait and I want the environment to be just as interesting as the person that I'm working with, usually what I'll do is I'll lock down onto a tripod. So I always carry my tripod with me. And let's say for this example, right, I have this picture right, of my friend Daniel, mm -hmm. and I wanted to be able to do this as a portrait, right? I've got, I want to play with some crop, I want to play with some of this stuff, but in trying to expose for Daniel, some of the stuff is blown out, some of the stuff throws into darkness. So that can cause a problem when we're working with this. However, if I start futzing with exposure, if I start futzing with my, the position that I'm in, something is going to give. Either Daniel's going to move or my environment's going to move mm -hmm. and things are going to be a mess. The best thing for you to be able to do is to take what's generally known as a plate or, or a backdrop on this. So what you'll do is you take a tripod, just put your tripod down right, and take the exact same shot without that person on there. But a lot of the times people, we focus a lot on Photoshop trickery. We focus a lot on can we transform, can we move, right. can we blend, can we do this kind of stuff. The easiest way for you to be able to get rid of all of that stuff is just to pop a shot uh -huh. with the person outside of the element and have it locked down on a tripod where nothing moves. And what I did here is having the tripod there allowed me to be able to take different exposures Great. for this image. So at any point in time, if I like some elements of this image that's here, mm -hmm. I can go ahead and I can grab that and bring that into the image. If I like some elements that are here, I can grab that and I can bring that into the image. And you're not doing, this isn't an HDR thing. This is a, you wanna make sure that you take the best of some of the images and merge them back into an original file. And you're gonna find that sometimes that gives you a nice cleaner image. Right. While software is really, really good at pushing and pulling and exposing and changing, sometimes the, the ye old way of just grabbing one spot at an exposure, bringing it in, grabbing another spot at another exposure, bringing it in, that will give you a nice look. So simple exposure blending, but that's a great idea. You know, a lot of people don't think about capture the background. Yeah, I tell people all the time, the number one thing that you can carry with you that'll take your photography to the next level is a tripod, any tripod. The moment that you put on a tripod, you yep. have all sorts of different things that are available to you from exposure blending to long exposure mm -hmm. to um, any kind of fixed time lapse. So the tripod is the, some, is the heart of everything that you're doing. After that, it's a light, but the tripod will get you going. That's great, RC, very cool. And yeah, I bet cool. there's gonna be a whole bunch of people that go out and take pictures of their backgrounds first now from now on. Yeah. That's a great idea. So. Uh, speaking of backgrounds, I did a Cheap Shots about white backgrounds. So let's have a look. Hey guys, on Cheap Shots, this time I wanna to talk to you about white seamless backdrops. There's several ways that you can get there. Now, if you are set up in a studio and you have the luxury like we do here at the studio, we've actually built a, a permanent wall. This is the most expensive way to do it. One of the less expensive ways is to buy a roll of white paper that's 10 feet wide and it's specifically designed for that. The problem with white paper is it tears, it wears, eventually it wears out and you have to buy more white paper. One of the more permanent solutions is this. And I used to recommend this exclusively. I'd go, look, this is really great. It cost me between $30 and $40. It's 10 feet wide by 20 feet long, and you can pull out a white seamless. Granted, there are a couple of little wrinkles, but you can always light that away. So using your lighting, get rid of all the wrinkles and that kind of thing, or you could steam it if you wanted to, I guess. But it seemed like a really inexpensive uh, way to go for me. The problem is, I'm an inexpensive guy, so I have lots of speed lights. I don't have those big studio strobes all around. And this absorbs an extra stop of light over the paper. So really, you have to kind of balance it out. Does paper as a white seamless backdrop work best for you or cloth like this? And it's going to depend on your lighting situation. And you're going to be more limited in your lighting ability if you go with cloth. Just a little bit of peek behind the curtain on white seamless backdrops. Either way, save a little bit of money. Save some money on shipping if you go to B&H if you decide to buy the white seamless paper. That's it for Cheap Shots this time. 
We'll see you again next time. Nice. Thanks, very, sir. very, very nice cheap shot. It's yes, just a quick overview. But I like your background better. <laughs> I really do like your tip better. I'm going to go do that. Well, white versus a whole bunch of uh, boat motors. I mean, come on. It's good. It's good. This gives you a lot more texture. Yeah, I like it. But anyway, uh, keep in mind, guys, none of this would be possible without the folks over at Kelby Training. If you like the stuff that I do here, if you like the stuff that Larry does here, and that all of these photographers and teachers do, right. you would want to go to kelbytraining.com. It's a 1995 membership. You can even get a discount if you're a NAP member or a year membership to see the best teachers on the planet teach you all of these things from Photoshop to photography. It's amazing. Some of the stuff that's really popular is the inspirational stuff. That's right. Great stuff. That's right. All right, let's do this. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll go ahead and talk about the website that we want to watch as well as a little bit of giveaway. Contest time. Have you ever wished that you could have direct access to the world's top pro photographers, Photoshop experts, and creative minds? With KelbyTraining.com, that wish is only a few clicks away. Hi, Adam. Dude, I think you are really going to love this class I have for you today. Our training style is very casual. It's like having your own personal instructor teaching you today's most sought after techniques, step by step, from start to finish, whether it's on location or in studio. It's easy and conversational, unlimited. 24 hour a day access to hundreds of exclusive classes from the world's top pros. A subscription to KelbyTraining.com is a must have for photographers, graphic designers, anyone that's serious about taking their creative skills to the next level. Hey, if you ever need any help, just come back online at KelbyTraining.com. I'm just one click away. Take care. Subscribe today. Visit KelbyTraining.com for more information. Hey guys, welcome back. You know, right before the break, we were talking a little bit about Kelby Training, and then you saw a Kelby Training commercial. The the uh, 1995 price. If you're a NAP member, you're already a NAP member. Yeah, so I get our, used to that price. That's RC's, <laughs> that's RC's price. He has, actually has to pay for his monthly subscription, but uh, it's 24.95 uh, for month to month. But if you're a NAP member, then it's uh, it's 19.95. Right, more reason like to join NAP. Yeah, be a, be a NAP member too. Um, guys, I want to tell you about a really great website to go to for inspiration. The guy's name is Paul Bartell. He's a NAP member, and his website is photobart.net. Now, the reason that I like him is not just because he's got some really good photography and, and very good control of light, but one of the other things that I really like about the site is that he does composites, just a great job on composites. He, he has this slideshow that shows the before and after. So he'll show a product and then he puts in a different background and he does more than just product shots and backgrounds, just some pretty cool compositing. Very nice. talented guy, good photographer, good Photoshop user. Nice, awesome, awesome. Congratulations to that. Now, we have some giveaways. Yep. We're giving away two books. Now, the first book, Get Your Photography on the Web. This is the book that I wrote, kind of my, my, uh, my way of kind of telling photographers, get out there right. and make a website, because it's actually very easy to we do. Didn't, we didn't plan this, but I've got to interrupt RC. I talked to a guy, I was at a camera club this past week doing a presentation. This book was such a hit there. One of the guys there awesome. was telling me he saw your class on Kelby Training mm -hmm. about getting your photos on the web. And he goes, it was a great class, but you know I couldn't get my mind around it all. And he said, and I got, I got the book, and it's, he goes, it's my Bible. So oh, cool, man. It was, it, was very very, cool. it was very cool, and absolutely, it is a great book. Now, the other thing he was pointing out is, He's not a web guru. He's mm -hmm. a photographer, and he really wants to get his photography just right, and he, he swears by this. Yes, yeah, see, and I, I did a talk over at this other area, um, the, like a Tampa Area Professional Photographers Association. Right. And I was talking about it, and I was just like, you know, guys, you don't want to be a web expert, right? Like, I don't, you don't want to learn <laughs> no code. Shit. You want to do that stuff. I do a lot of that stuff. I, I, I kind of dig it. I like the nerdy things. But... Photographers just kind of want to get their stuff on the web. They don't want to deal with any of that right. stuff. So I wanted to make a book that just kind of took you from start to finish and just said, look, forget about all of the technical stuff. You can actually get yourself in a weekend, get yourself online. This is exactly how I did it. Now, at the same time, I know that some of you are going to do that and some of you are going to be a little technologically inclined. 
you're going to want to take it a little bit more to the next level. If you want to learn all of the ins and outs, because I use WordPress to be able mm -hmm. to do that stuff. If you want to learn more of the ins and outs, here's a great book for you. WordPress Second Edition by Jessica Newman Beck and Matt Beck. So this book gets you through the ins and outs of WordPress, the platform as a whole. Okay. We'll talk about it a little bit here, but if you want to take it a step up, you can step yourself up by using that second book. So you're going to get both these to one way? Both of those to one person. Very both cool. of those to one person. Thanks so much to Peach Pit for making all of that stuff possible. Peach Pit, the publisher of great books. <laughs> we love them. We love yeah. them. Now, keep in mind, guys, you're watching this either through Google+, Plus, you're watching this through YouTube, you're watching this through um, iTunes. Leave us a comment on any one of those. But the only way that you can win these books is if you go to the Kelby TV website. You got to go to kelbytv.com forward slash DTown TV. Find the episode that you're doing this for. Leave a name, leave a comment, and you'll be up and running. Yep. So that's the part that a lot of people, I mean, we appreciate everybody that you guys are coming from all these different places, but our producer can only use one spot. That's the spot that they're using. Right. So go there. Make sure you go there. Even if you comment, you can copy and paste the same comment from someplace else over onto the uh, the official website. I'd love to see. I'd love to hear where people see it from. Do they see it? You know what? Make that a comment on the comment stream. Tell us where you see it. Do you see it from Google Plus? Do you see it from YouTube? Do you see it from the show website? Do you see it on iTunes? Right, that'd be helpful. Let us know. And no matter what your comment, positive, negative, or whatever, you are randomly in the uh, in the the drawing for one of these drawing. two. Well, yeah. for both of these. You yeah, have both, both at the same time to one person. Nice guys. That's it for another episode of D Town TV. My co-host RC, thanks so much. My co-host Larry, thank you so much. We'll see you soon. See you. Bye, guys.